The Bible says in the book of John, chapter 4, from verse 23, that the hour cometh and now is, that true worshipers must worship God in spirit and in truth, for that is what the Father seeks. God is a spirit, and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Today, I want to speak to every young person and let you know that you must be a worshiper of God. God, he's wonderful to the point where he requires us to have a relationship with him. He's open to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with you. Despite any or everything that you think may be going on today, he is more than just a bank or a microwave where you go to collect blessings and collect things that you may need or be desperate for. He is a God that requires and demands that he is worshipped. He wants to have that opportunity to fellowship with you on a one-on-one -on -one and on an intimate level. And there are extra benefits. There are benefits that it's not even extra. There are things that belong to us, but... You can only get some things in worship. And that's why I wanted to bring up the scripture to let us know that true worshipers, not those, not those that worship him on Sunday morning once a week, not those that are provoked by their favorite CD or their favorite worship leader, but true worshipers, those that live a life of worship, those that know that in their doing, in their acting, in their loving of others, in their giving, in their sharing, in their caring, they are worshiping God. Those true worshipers, the Bible says that we must worship God in spirit, being led by the Holy Spirit, the comforter who is left behind for us, the friend who the Bible says will lead us into all truth. The Bible also tells us that through that spirit, we are to worship God in truth. You cannot worship God in truth without the spirit of God. And when you worship God in truth, you are not concerned about who is next to you. You're not concerned about where you are. You're not concerned about the situation or the times. To be a true worshiper of God, you are someone who worships him simply because of who he is. It's not about what you need. It's not about what you can get out of it. It's about recognizing and understanding that this is your creator and without him you would be nothing. True worshipers are ones that worship God because of what they know he is unto them. Simply being alive is enough to worship God. The word worship in the Bible, and it's it's a word that even Strong could not explain. He, refer, he, he compared it to like a dog who is going for the crumbs at the master's table. It is an inexplainable word, but it's a word that means reverence. It's a level of intimacy that says that no one else can take the glory for what I am but God. It is a word that simply means that I come and I bow. I come and I surrender. I come and I just give it all up to the one who has made me even here able at this time to be able to lift a hand, to have a muscle to cry with, to have a muscle to speak with, to have a muscle to say thank you Lord with. There are several examples in the Bible that we look at. One is the woman with the issue of blood. And the Bible tells us that this woman with the issue of blood, that she came through the crowd. She did not care who was around her. She did not care who pushed her away, who shunned her, who looked up at her. She was not coming to impress them with her latest outfit or her latest smile. She was just com coming because she knew that down at the feet of that master is where her healing was, is where her redemption was, is where her, her, her peace was. There's also a man in the Bible, the boy David. The Bible tells us, even in the Old Testament, that he lived a life of worship and praise. He lived a life even as a shepherd to his animals in the fields. That all he did was recognize that there is a God. All he did was recognize that there is someone higher than him that he needed to create a relationship with him. So he worshiped God around the clock. And the Bible says that while he was minding his business in worship, while he was minding his business at the place where God has called him to be, the Bible said that there was a deliberation in his house on who is to be king and his father brought all of his older brothers educated than him maybe more handsome than him definitely more cleaned up and suited up better than David but the Bible says that the Lord rejected them all and chose to elevate chose to promote the one who lived the life of worship minding his business the Lord snatched him and gave him a promotion and it is because of the covenant of God but most importantly for David's man factor it is because he lived a life of worship I just want to 
encourage a young person today that no matter what may be around you, make it a habit to worship God. Do not let it be something that you do only on a Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings or nights when you are in the midst of fellowship. Worship God around your home. Worship God at your job. Worship God when you're dealing with other people. Worship God as you be a blessing to everybody that comes around you. The worship of God must be in spirit. It must be in truth. For us in our generation and our day and age, it must be around the clock. It must be all the time. Worship God because he's wonderful. The Bible tells us over and over again that to worship him is what we were created for. We see several examples of him and the Lord loves a worshiper. He loves to have the opportunity to commune with you, to reveal secrets unto you, to tell you directions, to give you your next step. A worshiper knows in whom they believe. They understand that if God doesn't do anything else, that he already does enough. A worshiper knows that God deserves the glory simply because of who he is. Minister Sonny Badu said that worship to him is like a warship, W-A-R, that when he enters into that place of worship God does things it is not by anybody else's power or might or strength but in that place of worship you begin to see that God turns into the defender that he says he is he turns into the provider that he says he is he turns into the healer that we know he is worship God all he wants you to do is recognize who he is all he wants you to do is recognize that he is worship the Bible says that the hour cometh and now is some of us, we may not have the next five minutes. We may not have the next day. We may not have the next year to improve our worship life. Do it today and you begin to see God enter and move in you and through you like never before. The hour coming and now is that true worshipers must worship God by the leading of the Holy Spirit and through the truth that only the Holy Spirit can lead us to. God bless you, and I'll see you next time on Talk by Faith. Worship me. Bye-bye.